I've got lastly, Dr. Bauman. And you guys, I'm gonna go alphabetically and, and the start of the question so I can keep track. It's, you know, B and R and uh, keep myself straight. So Leslie first and then Anya. So hi everyone, I'm Leslie Bauman. I'm a dermatologist. I am not a video gamer. This is my son's bedroom because it's the quiet place in the house. Everyone always asks me what video games I like, but these are great chairs. If you haven't sat in them, they're wonderful. Um, I'm gonna be answering the questions today based on running a medical practice. And I also started a software company in 2014 that does uses software to generate skincare regimens and it is a franchise company and we sell franchises to doctors offices that want to use the system we have about 250 doctors using the system and um, i had to file a lot of intellectual property for that so i know about intellectual property and running businesses and i have about 30 employees anya all right rock and roll i'm anya rodriguez i um i'm also a uh with Leslie in the uh, top women leader uh, new group that's formed, as well as I'm um, with Janet Altman in the Forum 26. Is that right? Um, and so um, I I uh, own and manage a consulting firm that's called Key Lime Interactive. We help uh, the largest brands, global brands, uh, with their customer experience, um, helping them build products that you and I could uh, use um, with less friction, make it easy for our lives. Um, and uh, over the last year, I've been involved in uh, creating a new software product. Yesterday, I won a pitch competition. Oh, you won! Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> I, was a, I got third place. Ford sponsored it. And so I'm just uh, in the beginning of, of creating that whole software side of things and really hopefully to accelerate the business. I have about 30 employees as well. Great. And thank you. And thank you for being here as our experts today for Just Ask TCI on getting things done. I really wanted to put getting SH-T done, but I was afraid I could get into trouble if I did that. But I think everybody knows that expression. So uh, first question, I'm going to start with Leslie and then Anya, you'll answer the same question and then flip flop. Here's, here's our question, Dr. Bauman. It's harder than ever for me working from home with so many conflicting priorities. How do you set priorities? Well, you have to think about what your goals are. So I'm a very goal oriented person, as you guys know that know me. So the first thing you have to think about what your goals are, and um, it depends on if you're thinking personal or professional. But I, I really like to think about this book I talked about yesterday, where you taught you figure out your lead and your lag measures. So what that means is, let's say that you want to lose weight. And um, you just get on the scale every day and nothing ever changes. And you're like, why can't I lose any weight? Well, the thing is, if that's because you're just looking at your lag measure, your lead measures would be eating less calories, exercising more. So what you have to do is you have to identify what your lag measures are, what your goals are. So once you know what your goals are, then you have to figure out what you have to do to meet those goals. And that's how you prioritize. So the most important goals should be your biggest ones, obviously. And I'm sure you guys have read that um, seven habits of highly effective people. In that book, there's this great thing where he talks about you get a jar and you put the big rocks in first and the, the littler ones and you put the sand in last. That's how you should do your schedule. And your big rocks should be those lead measures that, lad, that add to your lag measures. And you really have to learn to say no. And, and once you prioritize and you, I actually put things in my schedule. So if I know that I have to write a paper on something, I know it's going to take me four hours, I put it in my schedule. And that's how I keep myself from over committing because if you can't find a square on your schedule, it means you're not gonna have time to do it and you have to boot something if you can't do it. And um, and that's that's basically, I'm really good at prioritizing, but I'm not good about saying no. So I end up doing too many things. So I have to work on having fewer things on my priority list. Please don't take me off your priority <laughs> list, lastly. <laughs> Anya, same question. It's harder than ever for me working from home with conflicting priorities. How do you set the priorities? Yeah, so um, I, I think I think what we we were very fortunate because uh, about a year ago we really started to implement uh, traction, which is um, kind of similar to what Leslie said: is you sort of set up rocks at a quarterly, at an annual basis, and then you kind of pull it down to the quarter, and then each person has individual things that they need to do. Um, so for us, it's it's really, you know, what I did is I, I went ahead and just printed those and they're like sitting right in front of my my face every day, <laughs> just because if I forget to do it, I like at least have it front and center. 
Um, and, and what I end up doing because, um, because I am trying to just make sure that I don't sort of pull myself into many directions, I end up typically blocking my morning first hour of the day where I am like, part of it is I spend, I take a quick walk with my husband around the block. Now he's my CFO. So he's, uh, he's right now involved in the business, uh, for the last couple of years, but I walk around and just, we, we just talk about sort of what the day is going to be like, which helps me sort of prioritize. And so we have like, in other words, have somebody to be your accountability buddy to just make sure you kind of know what you're going to get done today. Um, and then, and then I, I literally I'll come back and I, um, I, I typically do something which will kind of answer something to the second question. Um, there is a feature in, in Google that's like an extension, which is like pausing your inbox. I pause my inbox because if I start looking at my email, I'm going to go crazy and I'll start doing something else. So I get very, very focused on sort of what that priority is and just trying to answer to those specific things. And then, then I'll let my day sort of set itself. I don't let anybody schedule me typically before 10 o'clock in the morning. That doesn't happen. So. Right. Thank you. Um, and then again, this is informal. So if you have something to add and you want to unmute yourself, feel free to do so. Okay, second question. And Anya, we'll start with you. And because you already did start a little bit on this. What do you do when you're interrupted constantly? I feel like I have too much on my plate. What can I do to not, oh, well, actually, I think I combined two questions there accidentally. So we'll separate that out. What do you do when you're interrupted constantly? Yeah, I, I, I get interrupted all the time. I got three children, <laughs> so, so that happens way too much. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I try, I mean, I literally have, I, I mean, at home right now, I'm having to lock the door because if not, they're running in, uh, especially if it's an important meeting. Um, and um, and so what, what I'm trying to do is I, I literally will pause, I, I'll tell you, I pause my inbox and that's the only way I can do it. And I know it, and if you ever get an email saying my email is my I'm paused right now is because I'm not in that sort of zone and I need to get away from stuff. Um, but but yeah, it, it's it is I, I don't know. There is there is it is hard to sort of uh, keep it, you know, when you're constantly like getting pulled left and right. I just I try to focus in and I just say, OK, I'm going to get this done. And, and I tell people, hold like if, start, if I start getting pinged with my messenger like every 10 seconds. Unless I see a crisis, I'm like, is it a crisis? No, then I, I'll, get, I'll get back to you in an hour. And so I try to kind of set up the line. Now I did do a good job at like really pushing off and this quarter is officially the first quarter where I've now, I have my operations person being the operator of the business. And so now I'm really focused on the business instead of being in the business. And that takes a while of like over a year to get to that point, but I finally think I'm getting there. So it's been, it's been a little bit better from being like everyday business. You need to have somebody that's going to be sort of your bouncing in a line, if you will. Right. Thank you. Um, and then we'll come back to that other part that I think should have been two thoughts. Uh, Leslie, what do you do when you're interrupted constantly? So this used to be a huge problem for me. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what worked for me. So the first piece of advice I have is you have to figure out what time of day you're the most productive. For me, it's early in the morning. Any, sometimes I get up at 5 a.m. and work then, but any time before noon is my best thinking time and I get the most stuff done. So I don't want to be interrupted during that time. So I try to protect that time. And what I did is I started setting up routine meetings with the people who bother me the most or who interrupt me the most. So everybody has their spot on my calendar and I taught them to put things, cause you know, people will think of something and they'll send you a text or they'll send you an email. I've trained, retrained my team to put something on an agenda. So then when they meet with me, we have this whole agenda of things they wanted to talk to me about. And so they just stick it on the calendar item instead of emailing it to me. And that way people leave me alone because they know they have their protected time with me. We also have a weekly huddle on Monday mornings with the entire team and every we go through everyone just like we're doing now. Um, and each person talks about what they're doing and what their questions are. And that kind of helps us have all these discussions all at once. And then um, one guy who works for me has this protected hour or this open door hour where he, anybody who has any questions can go talk to him. I like that idea too. I know this dermatologist in California who you can call him at 9 a.m. in the morning if you have any questions. On Fridays at 9 a.m., you know you can call him. And that way he keeps all his interruptions at that time, which is really, really great. And let's see, and it's up to you to make your, you insist on it. You really deserve that private time. 
and you have to just make it very clear to people that they can't bother you in that time. Of course, it's different when you have kids. I'm not talking about with kids. It's a little harder with them. But with your employees, you have to train them to respect your time. Right. Yeah, well, one, you. other thing, one other thing that I'd like to add is I did this to sort of, because I, I, I love data, if anybody knows me, you know that about me, but I, I started looking, there's a couple of different tools. I use something called Time Doctors. There's another one that is called Rescue Time. But I just, I let it run in the background of my computer and I just wanted to see over a couple of weeks what I spent my time doing. Like how many, like what was it looking like? And, and just kind of letting it run and knowing, I mean, you kind of know it's there, but like letting it run in the background and then looking back, it kind of starts making you really aware of how you're wasting time on certain things. And so if you do that exercise with yourself, you can start to reprioritize what is important. Um, Anya, can you put that in the chat for everybody what you just said, those, those tools, please? Um, Leslie, you're, you're next on the, the second part of the question. I feel like I have too much on my plate. What can I do to not feel overwhelmed? Well, I always think about it like when you walk into your house and everything's a mess, it's overwhelming and you just you can't deal with it. So the way I've always taught myself is you just focus on one room or, one, or maybe just the closet. You just do that one thing and go to the next thing. And that's the way you can't sometimes look at the big picture. Sometimes the big picture is too overwhelming. So you just um, do the low lying fruit. So I've always said my life is like a juggle and I just look around and I try to see which ball's about to hit the ground. And I focus on that one as much as I can. And some of them are starting to come down, but that, but I have a little more time before they hit the ground. So those will be lower priorities. Right. Thank you. Anya, same question. Too much on my plate. What can I do to not feel overwhelmed? I, oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a battle for me. Uh, I, um, I think for me, it's, it's really, I, I try to, uh, I've been getting better at really just spending, you know, pulling in time just to be with people that I like to, because I think we, we all will jam. And, and I think for, if you get, you know, if you're anything like me, you'll, you'll you know, want to, you want to keep, you know, you're, you're so competitive that you want to keep sort of jamming in as much as you can from a work perspective. And so for me, I, I need to, in order to not get that overwhelmed feeling, I need to feel the balance. So I have to force myself to say, no, I, I need to go take a bike ride with Erica Tawani, which I did last week, Saturday, because I need to do that. I need to do that for me. No, I'm going to go have lunch with this person, even if it's like at a park or whatever. I'm not really doing, or I'm at least, I just, I need that. I need to feel like I'm doing something that is, that is, because otherwise I start like feeling like I, I need to balance it. That's my way of getting balanced. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Last week, last weekend I had to actually put on my schedule. I love to read and I, it's been falling by the wayside, but I, I intentionally, and I told a friend, I'm going to be reading at this time. And I got the text after, did you read on Sunday from one to two? Like you said, you were. Yeah. I have something funny to add. I, <laughs> people make fun of me, but I schedule spontaneous time on my calendar. <laughs> I'm going to be spontaneous from one to two o'clock. <laughs> and what do you find yourself doing when you're being spontaneous? Do you go for a walk or, you know, what do you do? Um, lately, I've been oil painting. That's my new thing. It's so fun. Nice. Right. Um, let's see. Next question. And we're starting with Anya. Anya. Do you have any tips for staying on track after falling off the wagon? Yeah, I mean, for I think I think um, I think for me, I, you know, I go back. You know, Leslie had that that example with uh, with you know, sort of doing the the lead indicators and things like that. I think that was a really great way to look at it. Um, for me, I I I need to just do like small little changes. I cannot. I will become overwhelmed. If I fall off the wagon, if I say to myself, oh, now I have to do X, Y, and Z. So I almost have to break it into small chunks so I can get those small chunks. And I can't like add too many things into my plate at the same time. So like in the case of, um, in the case of like, maybe I, I, I want to uh, write a blog article. Let's just make it something more work related. So if I say to myself, oh, I have to sit here three, four hours, I might become overwhelmed. And, I, and even though I might have done the research and whatever the case may be. So I have to break it down into like sort of sub steps. And, and so for me, it's, it's like, okay, I, you know, I'm not going to tell myself I need to write a blog article. What I'm going to tell myself is I need to just 
talking to my phone um, in the morning and just get some, you know, random thoughts in there for like a minute or two. And then so at least I could start sort of collecting where, where I want to head towards instead of saying, and I got to do that for the next five days, just speaking to my, to my uh, recorder on my phone for two minutes for the next five days. That'll give me sort of 10 minutes of content, if you will. And then I listen it back to it and then I can start putting together the outline. I got to bring it down. I cannot do it in a way that if I become, if I fall off a the wagon, then I'm just going full force in. I used to be able to do that, but now I just have to like break it down because I'm not, it's just too much. And uh, I don't know about you, but it, things seem uh, more overwhelming going with COVID and the emotions behind it and on uh, and all of the things that are happening. And I don't know if that's uh, the case for anyone else right now in this time. You know, for, for, it was interesting, for the first month or two, I felt a little bit of relief. I think it was, it slowed down everything a little bit in a certain way. Cause I mean, I was crazy going with like trying to deal with being a mom, being a business owner, being, doing everything and like having to go to baseball, having to go to dance, whatever, hundred things. And I guess when all that went away and it kind of just really made you concentrate on sort of what's important, that was great. But I, now I feel like now fast forward here to these number of months, we're all back on like this, like, you know, on this running machine. I don't know what it is. I feel like back. Like I think it's now the new normal has become a different level of like today's stress, but we're all sort of trying to run back in and make up for whatever's lost this year. So I just, there's a lot of overwhelming feelings. This yeah. Thank you. Leslie, same question. Do you have any tips for staying on track after falling off the wagon? Well, I feel the same way you feel that everything is crazy now and busier than it was trying to catch up. But um, when I feel overwhelmed with work, what I do is I make a list of all the things that I have to do. You can tell I like lists. And um, I look through the list and I see, look to see if there's anything on the list that has to be done by me and those I circle. And anything that somebody else could do if I taught them, I try to delegate that to somebody else. And I read this really great article once about when you delegate, um, because it's hard when you're good, you know, when you're a control freak to delegate things. When you delegate, if you give someone bullet points of exactly how you want it done, then they're much more likely to do it the way that you want and you get better results delegating. So now I have this new thing where if someone else can do it, I make myself delegate it to them so that it frees up some of my time. Now, mentally, if I feel overwhelmed, I actually have a checklist that I give myself. And if I mentally am overwhelmed, I make sure I'm sleeping seven hours, that I'm eating healthy, I go to a yoga class, I try to meditate, I call two happy friends, one of them's Lori, and I try to help another person because that makes you feel good. And if I do that, that's my prescription for my mental health, I'll be fine in 24 hours. Great, thank you. Anyone else have anything to add before we go to the next question on that? What your tips are? What are you doing? I think one of the important things for all of these questions is to go back to the first question, right? To reset your uh, your mind to what your top priorities are. Um, and, you know, I use OKRs, but everybody has their own system. It's what is the priority and what are the activities that lead to that most important priority? So if I feel like I've fallen off the wagon, there's too much on my list, I don't know what I should do next, I reset by going back to the priority list. I like Leslie's list better than that though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think it's important to, to refocus yourself on the right stuff and think about what, um, think about what impact the overwhelm is going to have on your results. Um, so Leslie asked, what's an OKR? So OKRs are a system by which you set an objective, which is, as you would say, the way you're looking at it, the uh, the lag indicator, the goal, and then the key results, the KRs are the leading indicator. I'm going to get this done, this done, and this done. It leads to this objective being accomplished by a certain time. I also like with the OKRs, or at least in the book we're reading, um, that it, it's, it's really quarter by quarter, kind of. It's easier, it's easier, to, um, it's easier to digest and, and handle and, and smaller, for at least for me, in the, in the smaller um, steps and dosages. Yeah. Thank you, Janet. Next question, and Leslie, we start with you. And we've kind of talked a little bit about these as we went through, but do you have any tools, technology or other, that you're using for getting stuff done? 
Well, we live and die, our entire family, even our kids, by Microsoft Outlook and our family. Um, and even when my kids were little, they learned how to put things on the calendar. Like if they wanted us to go to their wrestling match and it wasn't on the calendar, we wouldn't go. So we taught them. So, and it all started back before we had kids. My husband and I would both make plans for dinner with two different couples. And then who, you know, who gets, the, who has to tell people and cancel? So we have a thing, whoever gets it on the calendar first wins. So we're, I wake up in the morning, I look at my calendar and I do exactly what it tells me to do. We, um, since we went virtual, we're using Microsoft Teams with our office, I love it. It's like kind of having Facebook internally where everybody can do thumbs up and talk to each other. It's really a great program. And then I used to have the biggest problem when I would assign something to my staff, following up and making sure that they did it. because. I always do what's on my to-do list and I always get things done and I expect other people to be that way, but not everyone's like that. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not. So you need a way to track it without nudging them and micromanaging them and driving them crazy. So I discovered Asana and I love Asana. It is the best task software. The Microsoft to-do was horrible. Although my husband told me they have a new Microsoft to-do um, that's great, but I haven't tried it yet. But I really, really love Asana and it's inexpensive and easy to use and it hooks in with a lot of other things. And please put that in the chat too. Um, Anya, same question. Do you have any tools, technology or other that you use for getting stuff done? So so we're, we're on the other side. We use Google <laughs> and like, like Leslie, our kids have a Google family calendar. So I, I feel like I'm, I feel like you're my, uh, <laughs> my new girl crush. Um, but um, we also, um, you know, internally, like we, we had used Asana in the past. So we used to use Asana and we tried that. And now we've moved to something called monday.com. Um, it has for us um, better integrations with the, the, the tools that we use. Um, and then, and then, um, and then from another tools perspective, I mean, um, you know, we use things like, um, let's see, uh, I use a lot of, uh, like I use Evernote if I'm using like small little notes. I used to use little notes on my thing, so I use that and I kind of tag things accordingly. Um, and then like I mentioned before, I try to block my distractions using the, the pause inbox um, tool. And then I try to, um, I, I basically, I, I also do set reminders as another little, um, little add on into Google's um, email suite, it's called Boomerang. So I boomerang things back to myself, like things I might have to forget. Like if I have to reach out to Leslie again in two weeks, I'll set a reminder or boomerang back just in case I forget. And that keeps me, you know, especially from a, you know, even from a sales perspective of, um, you know, I haven't heard back. Um, what's neat about it is if I did just want the system to automatically send an email back to Leslie, like, hey, I haven't heard from you in two weeks. It, it, I don't even have to do anything. I could just you know, I can say in two weeks, send her a note and, and uh, if she hasn't sent me anything in those two weeks. And so that, that's a nice way to keep things because I think for oftentimes you'll, you get your list of to do's and then you start giving it to others and then you have to start tracking that, you know, hey, did they get this done or not? And it, and it just, it's hard to manage. And granted, if you put it on something like monday.com or Asana, you can get it done. But if it's smaller in scope and it's not making the big project management store software, um, doing that is helpful. Oh, that reminds me, when you do have a task management software, whichever one you use, your first task should always be make a to-do list because it's so rewarding to click that box. So you get soothed <laughs> immediately by accomplishing the first thing on the list, which is making the list. The other thing, the other thing that I would add, um, Anya, I'm trying to min minimize the number of tools because I have so many tools that I have so many things to check. So instead of putting the little things on a separate system i put them in asana i just don't make them public so they're my personal to do's you know i have to add this person to my contact list or read this thing i just drop them all into asana and then they're all in the same place to look at them but sometimes for me yeah pretty easy <laughs> thank you um anyone else have a, t a tool technology or other i still use sticky notes the old-fashioned sticky notes on some stuff to admit that who else anyone else want to share i am um, before i go on to the next question that we we just received in chat okay here's a question we got during the course of our session any tips on how to manage the increased number of communications and meetings 
adding Asana and Teams to our productivity tools has moved messages out of Outlook, but now I have to look three different places. So, um, I'm feeling that too. So I, I don't know, I, I might want to just punt this one a little bit to Leslie, but I, I do see like, you know, to, to, I guess to, to Janet's point, you know, as the more tools you have, the more you sort of have to blend it. The one thing that uh, one of my folks did for us is they've used like Zapier to sort of bounce things back and forth. So it's like for us, it's, there's some automation going on. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I just, you know, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more open space because I've now given my head of operations the, sort of the running the day to day. So I'm not getting boggled down by a lot of to do. So I'm feeling a little less of that. Um, but, but yeah, there's still some of that going on. Leslie, I'll punt. I, I don't know why I'm embarrassed to admit, but I have my assistant handle all that. So she, all my emails go to my assistant. I have a personal email and a, my assistant's email. All the ones that look like they're mine go through her and she triages everything, puts it on my Asana list, puts it on my calendar. So my, she literally runs my life because I get up in the morning and I do what she put on my calendar. So everybody who I work with knows if they want to see me, they talk to her and I keep her up to date on what my priorities are and what I'm working on. And so, for example, I got asked to give a lecture at some woman's group yesterday and she told me, no, I'm not allowed to do it. I don't have time. And that's so great to have somebody else like Anya, you said your husband does that for you. It you know tells you when you don't have time because uh, you know, you just uh, sometimes that jar gets full of all the big rocks and all the middle rocks and all the sand and you can't squeeze one more thing in. But you're right, there are lots of things to check. But for me, um, I go in and I'll I'll either check off the sauna to do things myself because I love checking off that I've done things or I'll just uh, send her a text on Teams that I did this, I did this, I did this and then she'll keep my asana up to late, up to up, up to date. And then if somebody assigns me things because my team assigns me things too, she'll talk to them, figure out what the priority is and set the dates and everything. But it, when she first started running my life, she would forget to put time to go to the bathroom and changing your shoes before you walk a mile to a meeting and all that. Now she understands that I've got to eat, I've got to go to the bathroom, I've got to be in the right outfit. And it, um, it you know, my husband makes fun of me that I have to have somebody run my life. But it, I read this one book one time about we only have a certain number of decisions we can make. And if, whether we're deciding what shoes to wear or some big important thing, it takes the same amount of mental energy and it adds up. So you don't want to have to make a bunch of stupid little decisions if you can help it, because that, that takes away some of your energy. We need to clone her. Do, does she have a, uh, does she have a twin? <laughs> she sounds like she's doing a great job. Yeah, I've had, I've tried that. Let me tell you, I failed every time I've tried that. I haven't found one that can do all that. The closest things my head of operations can confront. That's why I tell you, I, I feel like she's any, anytime I get overwhelmed, I push to her and she takes it, but like getting an admin that can do that level of like, if that's a hard one to find. Well, it took me two years to get her that way. I mean, the beginning I would get upset and she would say, listen, I can't read your mind, but in a year or two, I will be able to. <laughs> she just was real calm. I think that's the key is to get one that's real calm and really willing to learn. <laughs> and it also has to be somebody who believes that that is an important role and you have to act like it's an important role. And I'm not saying that because I do that right. I do that wrong. So uh, we hire assistants for our whole department and then I always, this always happens, I say, yeah, but George is smart enough and interested enough and he really wants to do marketing. Why am I giving him, you know, phone calls to make? Let me train him to do this next marketing thing. And then, you know, they get better and then they move up into a coordinator role and then we have no assistant again. So I'm not sure how to solve that. But I think a person in a role can can really help. I just don't know how to do it right. My I, I <laughs> My business coach told me to call her my chief of staff instead of my assistant because it elevates her to a different level and um, and it makes her think differently as well about what the importance of her role. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have any tools that are, or suggestions that, that they can add that's working for you? Um, and I can't help but wonder that at some point having too many pieces of technology, I mean, you keep seeing all these upgrades and updates and new things being added to, to what's out there that I keep hoping that say Microsoft gets it all right where you can do everything there. I, I tend to use Outlook and the tools there because it did get overwhelming for me to think about having to learn three new softwares. 
Um, but I keep so on hoping we see really great integration for something that just does it all. But I don't know if that's feasible. What What are you guys using? I, I'm talking to you guys, everybody, not not Anya and Leslie. Please share. While you guys are thinking, I have another little piece of advice that just occurred to me. Um, is I my husband made me start doing this because he's a tech guy and I would always get him to do every technology thing for me and it got to where I didn't know how to do anything myself. So now every couple of months I watch the, the videos on my Outlook or, or Sauna or whatever to see what the new features are and or even PowerPoint, I watch the new the videos and it keeps me up to date on all the new features. And I joke that I went through a midlife technology crisis about when I turned 50 and I had to start all over and teach myself how to use everything all over again because it was all new. But those videos, you can find anything on YouTube and um, Microsoft also has that whole learning center. Adobe has a great one. So it's worth your time to have some learning time. I call it sharpening your saw. And if you sharpen your saw every once in a while, you'll be much more effective. That's a really good idea on checking what the updates are because you may not even know that what you're using already now has a different functionality. Something, Anyone else? Oh, something, go ahead, Jen. Related, something else related to that is, so we're using Asana as we've said, and we switched over to it in June and we had a consultant help us implement, but each of our sub teams did it a little bit differently. And some of us have found things the other people don't know about yet because we're new to it and there's there's like shortcuts. So we're going to have a meeting where everybody has to share a shortcut that they've found or something new that they're doing with it. And I think that's going to be really beneficial um, to have your own people tell you how they're using it. So. That's a great idea. So I'd love to hear just if everybody can share one one thing that they're using. You know, whether it's Outlook, let's just hear, I'd like to hear from everybody on, on what it is you're, what, what's working for you. So um, please, uh, I'll call, if it's easier, I'll just go ahead and call on you. Um, and just, just one thing that's worked. Jackie. Unmuting. Um, we were using Asana and our reaction, you know, at first was the same as some of the other people we're saying it was like one more software, but once we got into it, it was helpful. Um, what we did find is that even with that, there were constant reminders to people who weren't checking Asana. So I guess getting buy-in is key. And um, I think Janet's idea of people sharing and having a special meeting slash session uh, to make sure everybody's on board would be very helpful. Yeah, that is a great idea. Christine, anything that um, you like to use? Um, well, fortunately here at the firm, we have a pretty good, you know, we use Outlook. We have good systems in terms of the, the work. Um, and honestly, what I found most helpful for me personally is is using an actual notebook and, and trying to write out when, you know, do this between this, this time and this time. and. Um, it also acts as a to-do list for me. So, you know, the next day I'm starting with a new sheet of paper, but I'm transferring things over and it seems like the only way I can get things done is, is actually that way. So I have a few different systems going on, but uh, old fashioned pen and paper works for me. I, like I, was, the saying, I, I was just gonna I, thank I do you that as well, Christine, personally. You know, every, every night I'm doing an updated to-do list for the next morning. And if I wait till the morning, I don't remember enough. <laughs> right, right, I understand. I, I do the same thing. I was just gonna say that um, I keep a pocket size or I guess a purse size um, pad. Um, and I tend to do that because it doesn't matter what I use. Mostly I do use Microsoft Outlook and it really wor works well for me um, when it comes to work. Um, but for personal items, I find that if I don't write them down, like l literally write them down, um, it, they don't happen. I, I mean, yeah. it, it, just, it helps me to just go into my purse and pull it out. Um, if I rely on my phone, I tend to either always be on low battery or my phone dies or I can't get it to work in my car. I can't find the charger anywhere in the car. And so I find that um, a pocket or purse size for me works really, really well. Jessica, what works for you? Yeah, so I use um, like an old fashioned calendar um, where I can physically write it down. I have the week here and then the lines for my to do right next to it. 
Um, and then I also use Reminder on my phone um, and mark a time where I want it to be done by. Um, so that also works for me. Right, Maureen. So um, we use Microsoft Outlook at the bank. We're, we're also doing Microsoft Teams. We're not there yet. Um, but what I find that works well for me, two things. I put I just put things on my calendar. So if I need to call back a client, I'll just set up the reminder right on the right on the calendar. So I when I open my calendar for the day, I know exactly what I need to do that day. But the other thing that we've implemented at the bank um, for my team, which has worked out very well, not technology related, but because we're all working from home, we've started having a daily phone call, 15 minutes, 8.45 to 9. We keep it to 15 minutes. And I meet with my two assistants and another investment advisor, and we go over priorities so that we can tackle, we know what, what are the high priority items and things that we can push off later. And that has worked unbelievably well. Just that we keep it to 15 minutes, fast and furious. We don't waste anyone's time. And that has been the best tool for me during this whole pandemic. Right. We do that too. We call it the hu the huddle, but we also do it in my medical practice. And all the nurses and the doctors get together at the beginning of the day. We go through the schedule, and we're like, "This person is going to be need to get out fast. This person is going to be here longer." And we kind of are prepared, and we know what nurse is going to go in the room. It just makes everything so much smoother. Right, Angelica, and I see jerseys in the background. Where are you? I'm in my husband's man cave. Um, he's a San Francisco 49er fan, mm -hmm. and so by default, as, as am I. <laughs> what but, do um, you do? What do you use? So I've, you know, pre-COVID and, and being a traditionalist like Outlook, as soon as an appointment's made, you just add the calendar invite so you kind of don't forget it. It sends it out to everybody. But because of COVID and before the onslaught of Zoom fatigue, it was mostly... Um, we tried implementing Asana. Asana works great with our communications team um, because, you know, who's going to work on the press releases? Who's going to work on the newsletter? Who's going to work on this? So for multiple projects, Asana has been great and you will get the notifications when things are achieved or like checked off. Um, the only thing that it is more cumbersome to go in and like, I'm going to task you with something. I'm going to task you with something. So I still use as a system um, a notebook, pen and paper. And then I do like a recap in an email, like here are the bullets, da -da -da -da. you're going to tackle this, I'm going to tackle this. Um, I would love to say that I'm like super cyber, but not, no, not there yet. Yeah, I actually um, use my Outlook, even I used to keep a personal and now Jessica knows where I am all weekend because I just, I couldn't have multiple calendars. I just use the Commonwealth calendar and you know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with too many calendars and then I was putting things in the wrong one. Um, Judy. I use Microsoft Outlook as well and type my phone. So I get reminders that I set up for myself and I can see what I have coming up tomorrow the next day. And let me back. Great, thank you. Do, do we miss anyone? Did we get everybody? Okay, um, any parting words, uh, Leslie, Anya, for before we close out for the weekend? Well, it's not really the weekend yet, but soon. Um, I want to just end with saying one more thing about agendas. It's so key. Like you guys just gave me three ideas and I um, I told, you know, my assistant put this on this agenda and that on that agenda and that on that agenda. So when I meet with those people, I won't forget to tell them that we want to do that Asana idea that Janet told us about coming up with all the your latest tricks on Asana. So it just now my brain's free doesn't have to remember that it's already on an agenda list. Anya, anything? Any closing parting words? Yeah, I, for me, it's I think that we all know this, but I think we got to remind ourselves to take a day at a time. It's uh, if you start thinking about too much about tomorrow, the day after you're going to become overwhelmed a little bit. Like so, just take a day at a time. All good points and, and um, take some schedule and some relaxation time this weekend as well. And Jessica put in and remind us, reminded everybody that we've got our next TCI talk October 28th, 8.30 to 10 in the morning. 
And um, it's Chelsea Wilkerson of the Girl Scouts. She's the CEO of the Girl Scouts. And for those of you that know Eliza, Eliza Fendel, they're, they're leading the, the TCI talk that morning. So again, thank you all for joining us. We appreciate your time. We hope you're coming away enriched and having learned some good tips and tools and tidbits. And have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And thank you so much, Leslie and Anya, for being our experts. We really appreciate your, your wisdom. Thank you. Bye, everybody. everybody. You did a great job. Bye. Bye. Bye.